Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. I thank you for this time. I thank you for the privilege that you have given to me tonight to bring a word to your people. Holy Spirit, this arrangement that is yours, take over in the name of Jesus. Lord, that at the end of this meeting tonight, we will not leave the way we came in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak to every heart. Speak to every heart. Let our lives be aligned to your purpose tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the amazing testimonies. Those that were shared here, those that people have not shared. Thank you for the wonderful things you have begun to do. Thank you because you are bringing them to completion. And we are grateful. We are a grateful people. Take the glory, Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can now have your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, tonight we are going in, in a beautiful direction. I believe that the Holy Spirit just wants, you know, He just wants to put things in place. Um, line upon line, precept upon precept. He, there are just some things that if they are in place, when, when the foundation is okay, you know, you, you, are, you are solid enough to carry the weight that is coming, you know. But if you're not ready and it, 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 that weight comes, you, you, won't, um, you won't maximize it. You know, you won't maximize it, and then in the end, it will be like, yeah, but God, you said. And I believe that's what tonight is about. So for those of us who were in church last Wednesday, we're continuing along that line. We're continuing along that line. So this is, you can title it, Stop the Shipwreck Part 2. Stop the shipwreck, but this is a it, it's we're continuing in that line. So last week was more like um looking inward. Last week we were dealing with the enemy that is the inner me. And um I remember telling us that God wants to send and He's sending and He has sent actually sometimes, if we want to be honest, loaded vessels to us. He has sent vessels in the form of people. He has sent vessels in the, in the form of maybe jobs, opportunities, you know. And I likened us to icebergs. That the iceberg, you know, when we say the tip of the iceberg, that is the part that is seen. But the total iceberg is actually that little part you see, then multiply it, whatever its length is, multiply it by like eight eight more times and add it to what you see that is the total iceberg that is the complete thing that is who you are so it is not just this person that we see it's not just this person that is all dressed up nice coming to church it's not just this person that smiles at us there is more to you the thing is that sometimes we don't connect with that part of us that we can't see and, there's, and then some other times, some of that part of us that is not obvious to people is the part God wants us to deal with. Because it is the part that influences a lot of what God wants to do, of what God needs to do. And the thing with God is, you know, I, I thank God for grace. I thank God that we are a New Testament church. I thank God that we, we came in this dispensation of grace. But you know what? Sometimes uh, it's good to go back to the Old Testament. It's good to, that's why the Bible is so complete. So we learn from those, um, those experiences. We learn from our, our forefathers, as it were. We learn and we have a fuller understanding of who God is. And one thing we need to understand is that God, in His love and mercy, will not promote you to a class if you have not 
sorted out the test in the previous class. In fact, every stage in life is to prepare you for the next. It's to prepare you for the next. So in his love and in his mercy, the one who knows the end from the beginning, sometimes he will keep, he will, he will just keep bringing you round, you know, like the Israelites kept going round that mountain until they came to a point where, you know, they, they, those of them who were like not getting it and all the unbelief, they had to die out before they could move into the promised land. So I, I, I believe that's why we are, we are here today. And, um, but tonight, the focus is not, last week we were the icebergs. Your neighbor was the iceberg last week. This week, you're the loaded vessel. If you remember, we prayed and thanked God for the blessings. You remember, we thank God for the blessings, for the good things that he's done in our lives. Because the truth of the matter is, you, we, the person sitting on your seat, you are also a loaded vessel. You are a blessing going somewhere to happen. You are also going somewhere to happen. In you, God has invested a lot. And his, you, are, you are his battle axe. You are also someone, you are, you are in his hands to fulfill purpose. So you are actually a vessel that he's sending to somebody. You carry a grace. You carry, you are carrying somebody's blessings. You are carrying somebody's promotion. You are carrying somebody's answer to that prayer. And so he's, he's also sending you forth. So tonight is, a, is about us being careful and being watchful so that we ourselves are not run aground. We are not shipwrecked. Do we, are we together? Okay. So I made a note here. I said that um, some of these things from last week may not necessarily be seen. I just want to make that clear. You know, it may not necessarily be a be seen, but it, it may be it just some, some, some wiring, something. It may be some association. It may be some, some weakness some attitude i mean some of us we are, we are dealing with procrastination procrastination is not seen in itself but procrastination has cost me a lot and i th i that is one thing that the lord has not let me up on so yes I'm, I'm i'm here to give you a word but the word is also for me to do all right so just to remind us of the things that we said, you know, to do to be able to melt that iceberg, to, to bring it down so that it will not shipwreck what God brings to us. I just want to remind us again. In totality, it is to submit it to the Son of Righteousness, to submit it to the Word of God. But I, t I mentioned four things we should do. That we should admit we have a problem. Don't color it. Don't give it a happy name. Call it what it is. Admit you have a problem. E.g. Procrastination. I will not call it, I had it all planned out. I was planning to. That, that thing freaks me out. You ask somebody, why did you not do this? Or you did not do this. The answer will not be, oh, I am sorry, I forgot. No, the answer will be, I actually had it in mind to do, but, you know, I haven't just read, gotten around to it is procrastination. You forgot. Call it what it is. You did not plan. Or you planned, you shall did not do it. Procrastination. Name it and claim it. After that, you can now find out what does God's word say about it. And then have a confession about who you are in Christ. To counter that weakness you're trying to deal with. Be accountable to someone expose that part of your life and to someone and allow yourself to be held accountable ultimately listen to the holy spirit do things god's way do things god's way when you know what the word of god says submit to the word do things god's way and when the holy spirit calls your attention obey listen 
and do what he says. Hallelujah. So after that brief recap, let us go in, let us continue with what we are doing tonight. So now in the office, we're in the process of employing people. And um, it's very interesting going through people's CVs. And my own CV was like that. You know, and it, it, the thought occurs to me, I just realized that you never see people's weaknesses on their CV. Is there anybody that has ever put on, this, on their CV, when you have put, I am a go-getter, I am a team player, I am a, I a problem solver, everything. By the time you make your, do you ever put, um, please just note, eh, I have a problem with late coming. Uh, sorry, eh? I am, in fact, I get easily offended. So you may just want to note that before you throw me in the team, you know. Or, okay, the issue of leaving my bed in the morning is a problem. I just thought the uh, organization should know, you know, just put this into consideration as you look at all my great strengths. Nobody does that. No, <laughs> I like that word. Pastor said, I have an equational issue with pilfering. <laughs> ah, so, nobody does that. Everybody comes with that beautiful tip that we all see. Everybody comes with it. You know, it's marketing. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, and... Uh, a, a lot of, a lo even in marriage, toasting self. Everybody comes. I have said, I have said saying it that my sons, whoever they want to marry, I must see her in real life. I must see her real life, real life. I see no makeup, no wig. I want to know if your hair is as bold as mine. I, I mean, let's all just be honest, please. Let me know what I'm up against. Okay, well, so I'm not the one marrying them. But at least let me see the person. Then, is this what you really want? Don't come and meet me after all. You know? So, it, 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 um, we do that even in our relationships. We do that in, in, in our friendships. We, we do that with, 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 with work. We do that in church. Which is why we'll come, I mean, I mean, really, we shouldn't be hearing church face. In ch how? Why should you have a church face? Why? Yes, and that was why one of our prayers last week was also that let, let, let all that is seen of me be all there is to me. Not that there is me here, there is me in the office, there is me in my house. Okay, there is me in my bedroom. Then there is me with the children. Then there is me with my parents. As in really, just, just be you. Just be one. Let even God serve. Let, the, let God and the devil not be, okay, I mean, the devil is used to going to and fro, but let God just be like, oh God, okay, we, even God will go, oh God. You know? So it, 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 um, and it affects us. It, uh, it affects us. You know, there's, um, I mean, while, while I, was, I was preparing this, there's, um, it's like there's a lady that just feels, you feel like your husband changed the goalpost on you. And it's a seed of resentment you're dealing with. You know? Um, because, and, and this is not because he set out to deceive you. Funny enough. What I just feel in my spirit is that it's, it's not that he set out to deceive you. You know that part of us that is like the iceberg, that it, it, sometimes we don't even know all of who we are. And as we go on, as we stay in God's presence, as we walk with him, a side of us is just revealed over and over, you know. And then this, you're yeah, like, no, he did not tell me. It's like, maybe before you got married, he had said he was going to do this. People were going to do this. And then now he's telling you, it's like, I feel the call to ministry. And you are not feeling nothing. You don't want to hear anything. You don't want to know. No, my own husband knew he was going to be a pastor from day one, you know. But it, 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 it's, it's, we, may, we may smile about it. I don't know who you are, but I know that that seed of resentment can get to be a root of bitterness and it will affect your home. Your, your husband did not, 
did not set out to deceive you. He is not deceiving you. Just be in a place of, of understanding with him. Take it to God. Whatever he has said to you, if he says the Lord said, take it back to God. The Lord will speak to you also. But don't think that he, he didn't set out to deceive you. So that, that is a word for somebody. So please just be at peace so that the enemy will not gain inroad into your home. Amen. Amen. So to help us today, we are going to be going to a story in First Kings. Oh, wow. 1 Kings 13. We're going to be reading about the story of M.O.G. We're calling him M.O.G. because the, the Bible actually calls him M.O.G. If your Bible is like mine, the title there says, The Message of the Man of God. That's M.O.G. And so it's a long one, so I'm not going to be reading the whole thing. But I'll tell us the verses I'll get to. So at this period, Israel had departed. I mean, the kingdom of Israel had been split into two. Judah, and um, there was a kingdom of Judah, and then there was a kingdom of Israel. And King Jeroboam was over Israel. And this king, this is a king that God gave him, you know, he was supposed to be judgment of somebody, but fine, God gave him the kingdom. But he decided to set up idols. He led Israel into idol worship. Because he was afraid that if they went to the temple to worship God, they will defect. They would change their minds and kill him and not his loyalty and all of that. But he led the people into sin. He led the people into sin. And so God had to send, as in it was so bad that, you know, God didn't, didn't use a prophet in, in the Israel where Jeroboam was. He had to get a prophet from Judah to come all the way to Israel to talk to this king. And... Um, the prophet went there and declared the judgment of the Lord. He declared the word of the Lord. Let, let me read verse 2 and 3. We'll just be skipping verses. He cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David. And on you he shall sacrifice the priest of the high places who burn incense on you, and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. And it actually happened. When the king tried to, you know, stretch out his hand and arrest him, like we read, I mean, the, 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 his hand withered. The altar split apart, and ashes poured, that's verse 5, according to the sign. So, we are we know it was it was clear that this man was a man of god this man heard god this man was sent by god this man knew god and he walked in the demonstration and power of god that was clear now god had also given him specific instructions which we see in verse 8 and 9. Because after the, the king had tried force, force didn't work. The king now started to say, okay, thank you, I've received the message. Just come with me. Let me just honor you, you know. Yeah, the man, thank you very much for, at least you prayed. God restored my hand. I'm grateful. And he said no. And in his response, we hear what God, the instruction God had given to him. Verse 8, he said, but the man of God said to the king, if you were to give me half your house, I will not go in with you, nor would I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not eat bread nor drink water, nor return by the way you came. So there was an instruction from the Lord. So he went another way and did not return by the um, he did not return the way he came to Bethel. As we read down the story there was also an old prophet who was in Bethel. Who the Lord, I don't know why they said old, but studying now, old may also mean that he used to be a prophet. Because we can read that and go, 
he was elderly in you know he was an elderly man but he he used to be a prophet because i mean he was there why did he not i mean some of the things he did actually will let us think along that line because this guy went he had he had his sons told him what happened and the bible says he went after that man he went after him and he accosted him now he met him he shall have met him on the way under sitting under an oak tree and then he told them and let's let's it'll be nice to read it verse 15 15 to 16 The, the old prophet said to Emoji, come home with me and eat bread. Emoji said, I cannot return with you nor going with you. Neither can I eat bread nor drink water, all the plenty things. I have been told by the word of the Lord. Verse 18, the old prophet said to him, I too am a prophet as you are. I too am, a, am in ILCC as you are. I too am born again as you are. I too am a leader as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord. He was told by the word of the Lord. But for him, and an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house that he may eat bread and drink water. Can we see what's written in brackets? Can we say it? Can we say it? He was lying to him. Verse 19. So Emoji went back with old prophets and ate bread in his house and drank water. Now it happened as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. He's no more old at that point though because God now used the same person to declare judgment to the one who disobeyed him. And he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah saying, Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and you have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but you came back, you ate bread and you drank water in the place of which the Lord said to you, eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. Verse 23. So it was, after he had eaten bread, that's the part that, as in, really, he really, he still sat down and finished the food. So whether he thought the old prophet was joking, I don't understand, you know, but, but I mean, saddled the donkey and, uh, and he left. Verse 24, when he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him. His corpse was thrown on the road and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the corpse. And men passed and saw the corpse thrown on the road and the lion standing by the corpse. They went and told it in the city. When the old prophets, I don't know why they're not more using the word old anymore. But it says when the prophet heard, he said, it is the man of God. He knew it was. It's a man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord has delivered him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to him. Here he was, he lied to him. For whatever reason, we don't know. I don't claim to know. All I know is that a good man's life was tragically cut down because of the person he went into association with. Because he was not able to discern that this voice that was speaking to him was not the voice of God. In his own case, sadly, the Lord had already given him a word. When somebody came with something different, he followed. There are some questions that came to my mind. I ask myself, did he not remember what God said to him? Did he not know? Or did he not remember that God is not an author of confusion? Why would God say to him, don't, don't defile yourself with anything in this place? And the same God will send an angel 
to come and tell him defile uh, uh, through another prophet go and eat knowing that in partaking of that land you have partaken of or you are, you are partaking of their sin is god an author of confusion did he not remember did he not remember i ask myself did it matter so much that he had to impress the prophet the prophet has said, I too am a prophet like you. I too am a leader like you. Does it matter? Did it matter to him so much that, oh, let me not hurt the prophet's feelings. Oh, let me not hurt my, my, my fellow leader's feelings before they'll think I'm doing too much. I'm feeling too much. Now only you, holy pass. Did their opinion matter more than God's opinion? What was more important? Because the other question that will come to our mind is, Kai, God, did the lion have to kill him? Uh -uh. Why did judgment fall on the old prophet? Why did it have to be this one? We know he's a good man. We know he's an MOG. We know he's born again. He fears the Lord. He's walking it. He's, he's a walker. As in, he out, in fact, prayer, everything, his, his mind, his heart is here. Why, why, why him? And then sometimes we look at God and think God is too hard. Especially those of us in the, that have just decided it's only grace we are under. We don't remember the rest of who God is. Only grace. And we say, why is he so strict? We need to ask ourselves these questions. The other question that I, I, that the other thing that bothered me was, God told you, deliver a message, go home. Don't come the way, don't follow the way you came. What were you doing sitting under oak tree? Why did they have to come and meet you there? You know you can't eat, you can't drink water, move, you are sitting down there. I mean, those are things that I'm like, Really? Okay, if he had kept going, maybe if he had left Bethel, it may have been more difficult to be pulled back. If he had just stayed with the word, yes, he may have been hungry. Yes, he may have been thirsty. Yes, he may have just, you know, things are not adding up. But I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay with this God. I'm going to focus on him. Nothing is going to distract me. I, I know things may not be. I know I, 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 my marriage may not be. Or I know my work may not be. My salary may not be. The economy, I, but I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. Maybe old prophets will not have been able to catch up. If he had not decided to sit under that oak tree. It's good for us to ask questions. It's good for us to pray. It's good for us to pray. But apart from praying, we are also meant to be watching. We are meant to watch. We are meant to be alert. We are meant to pray with understanding. We are meant to have an understanding of who we are. Because in these days, if we think the voices are many now, they are only going to get more in the days to come. They are going to get louder. Sometimes it's even going to be your own voice that will distract you from what God is saying. And so we need to wake up. We need to wake up. Life is more than bread and clothing and possessions and this and that for some of us wherever it is when you understand that you are on an assignment you are an MOG and God has given you an assignment in that office you are an assignment in that marriage in that family in that kiosk in that home that maybe you're even a house help you are on an assignment it was somebody's house help Neman got deliverance because his house help was bold enough to speak about her God. If we have that understanding in this age and in these days and in the days to come, 
our eyes will be single. Our focus will be on this God who has called us. And it will be hard for the enemy to pull us back. It will be hard for anybody. We hear it often that uh, pirates go after loaded vessels. The devil is after you. It's his job. We, can, we pray, we can stop his works. But you can't stop him from coming. He doesn't know how to do anything else. And until we cross over, that is all he's going to do. But you know what? It doesn't stop us from moving ahead with what God has called us to do. And that is why God wants us to, he's calling our attention to be discerning. We're still going to come back to the place of the Holy Spirit. We're still going to come back to know the word of God for yourself. Know the word of God for yourself. I have scriptures here. I can't read it. He said he has exalted his word above his name. He has exalted his word above his name. He watches Psalm, Psalm 138 verse 2b. He watches over his word to perform it. He will not contradict his word. There are things people will say to you. There are prophets, men of God, everything. You will hear friends, advice. Things will come. They will come. They will come. But is it in line with the scriptures? And if you do not even know the scriptures, how do you know you are being lied to? Heaven and earth will pass away, Jesus said. But he said, my word will not pass. Not even what it, not a dot. Everything God has said will come to pass. Let's take his word seriously. Number two, test every spirit. 1 John 4 verse 1 tells us that test every spirit, which is what I've said. What is, is it what the person is saying? Somebody tells you, it's your, your enemy pray that they will die. Is somebody in your family? Is this one? Is that one? Or somebody comes and tells you, my dear, just fashy the guy. Just fashy. Is it in line with what the word of God says? If Jesus had to stand and speak to you from the scriptures, will you know? Will he not be talking to you about forgiveness? Will he not even tell you, you know what, suffer yourself rather to be defrauded. I will fight for you. Will he not tell you, pray for, yes, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Will he not tell you, pray for your enemies? Will he not tell you, submit to your husband? Yes. Will he not tell you, submit to your husband? Love him. He's representing me. Support him. Will he not tell you, love your wife? Don't show her. Don't show. Okay. Be focused. Stay with God. Don't mix anointings. Now, there's a scripture that kept coming to me. Every time we read this scripture, I know it's marriage we're thinking about. But that is the word that came to me. Proverbs 5.15. Proverbs 5. He says, drink water from your own cistern. And run it. Everybody bring your mind to this place. Drink water from your own cistern. And running water from your own well. That is it. Drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Let's see John 7, 37. John 7, 37. Are we there? Are we there? On the last day, the title up there says the promise of the Holy Spirit. Do we see that? Okay, my own Bible says the promise of the Holy Spirit. That section. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And this he spoke concerning the spirits who those believing in him will receive. We have the Holy Spirit. At this point, the Holy Spirit was not yet given. 
But we have him. And God is saying, be focused. Stay with me. Don't mix anointings. Drink from your own system. Stay with the word. Because suggestions are going to come. Don't mix. Don't do clean water, brackish water. Don't be hot and be cold. Choose to stay with God. If they, have, if they use their own methods, use your own. Be wise in your own. Be wise in the ways of the word. Be wise in God's way, in the way of doing things God's way. Drink from your own system. Don't do a little, a little word, a little something. A little God, a little other things they do in the office. A little God, a little when the flesh is scratching me. And let me go. You know it's an itch, but you know be wood. Let's go and scratch it back. He's saying be focused. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Lastly, be consistent to remain in your place of planting where you will be fed. Let's read Hebrews 10, 24, 25. That is my last scripture. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, excuse me, but exhorting one another, and so much more, so much the more. So, the stirring up with each other in love and good works, the not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, the exhorting one another. Yes, we, sh we do it, but he says we should do it much more, even as we see the day approaching. Even as we see the day approaching. We should do more. Don't get tired of coming to church. If you believe, and if you're listening to me online, if ILCC is not your place on planting, fine. Wherever the Lord has led you to be, what you need, the word you need to build you up, the word you need to carry you for the, for the journey ahead, is in that place that he has planted you. He has given you shepherds there to watch over you, to feed you with the word that you need. Stay there. Be committed there. This is not the time, and thank God for internet. Internet going online was not for believers who are planted. It is for us to get the word out. Because if the gospel doesn't go out, Jesus won't come. And I don't know about you, but I really want him to come. So the word needs to get out there. There are some people that would never have gotten the gospel if COVID didn't happen. But it is not for us to now start behaving like prostitutes. You are here today. If you feel like you are jump here tomorrow. If you feel like you are over here tomorrow. Like that tree that, uh, I think it was Pastor Joel, that one image that they, they plant you, they uproot you. You plant yourself, you uproot yourself. You will never grow. You will never grow. You will never know this God. And you cannot blame him. You cannot put all your issues on his head. Because you don't even know him. You've not done things his way. So, for all the word coming in the future, and all the word we have heard to make sense, the Lord is bringing us to a place of decision. Look at your neighbor and call them loaded vessels. Lo look at the other one. Call them loaded vessels. Yes. Loaded. And God just wants, you to, wants to remind you of who you are. So that you guard yourself. And you do not let just anybody speak into your life or into come into your space you have to be deliberate about what you're hearing and then you have to be deliberate about walking this word about staying with the word that is what the lord has asked me to say to us tonight
One thing I know, one thing I know is that if God has said it concerning you, it will come to pass. One thing I know is that whatever it is he has promised, he will bring it to pass. And that he loves you. He loves you too much. He loves you too much to let you, to let any body, any strange thing come into your space. He is with you. He is for you. And his purposes for you will come to pass in the name of Jesus. If you stand for him, he will stand for you. And he will lift you up and he will honor you. Let us be on our feet as we pray. I just want us to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Spirit. Just pray in the Holy Spirit. Elebo <laughs> Ika rama ro se teye brente de 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 kalamaro shata yama nike bro sata yamande. Masta ya rose kasile re banada kite ye mende de de de. Rana mana suta ya baka sata ya branda da da da. Le bro soto yo branti ne de ke sata yamanda da da da. Moro to yo sele de 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 sadarabo shata yamanda. He says that grace is available. Grace is available. Grace is available. La murasa yaman ki ramo shata yamande de de de. Salamora kuta yamande de de bo shata yamande de bo sa. Ali mena ruta la yamaka ta yamanda da 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 bo shata yamanda. La teke bete ye marakata yabata yamanda da 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 da. Rosete ye mena Kasele ya marakata ya mande de 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 Rosotoyo mana laki de barasanda ya manda For that person that compromised you, you took a turn because you did not want to disappoint the person that was talking to you Maybe a boss, maybe an older person Somebody you are supposed to respect And you felt bad and you asked God for forgiveness He says he has forgiven you Don't let the devil trip you up with guilt But that grace is available for you to stand for what you believe. Grace is available for you to stand for the truth. Grace is available for you to stand for the truth. You are a Joseph in that place. You are a Joseph in that place. Solution has been placed inside of you. You are the loaded vessel he has sent to the organization. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do 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 saladabadi kare ambre ne de 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 masila ya maro sate ya makata branta ya mande de 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 nasila ya maro Roto yo sete ye breta kata ya manda da da da. La rosha ta ya maro sete ye brete de 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 de. Rosa kata ya mana ku seta ya manda da 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 da. Lambrono bodo shata ya manda da 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 da. I will provide for you. I will provide for you. I am your source. I am your source. Do not be afraid. Lena marosa ta ya manka bayanda. I am your shepherd. You will not want. You will not lack anything. You will not lack anything. Lo marate laki brasata yene mano si tele ki kende re hene mana hasola o tu ye mana kutele ke bene kera rara bana ki ne mano sakata ya mande de bosa ati le ne mano sata ya ba stand still and see stand still and see my salvation stand still and see my salvation ha 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 ena la barota ki tene ne de bando ni malasa ta ya ena mene katula mana lu no se le ya mara kutele de bena reina andu Ramado Selele Salamanda Rabosha Tayamaki de Mede Kesanda Rabosha Daya Lani Mara Sotoyo Brata Cabanda Rabosha Tayamanda 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 Rabosha Tayamanda
every every voice every seed every counsel every wrong every lie that has been planted in somebody's mind whether by their friend we don't care the source we know the ultimate source is the devil i want you to uproot it right now uproot it right now curse it to its roots command it to dry up today you are doing your deliverance because grace is available every planting that is not of the lord uproot it tonight in the name of jesus in the name spirit of falsehood i bind you i command you to get out of ilcc get out of this place in the name of jesus every every seed every word that has been planted that that is causing fear, that is causing division, that is causing somebody to go down. I uproot you. I curse you to your roots. I command you to get out. Get out of their minds. Get out of that marriage. Get out of that family. Get away from that young man. Get away from that young woman. Now, in the name of Jesus, we expose you tonight. Is as a church you have been exposed by the word of the Lord you have been exposed for the lie that you are. I command every scale to fall off for people's eyes now in the name of Jesus that that person, anybody, any association around you that has not been planted by God that is there for a purpose other than God's purpose. I declare that tonight they will be exposed in the name of Jesus. They will be exposed in the name of Jesus. I declare that their plan, that their agenda will not find fulfillment in your life. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the peace which they have dug, they will fall into it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just quickly want to pray for somebody, or we pray for somebody. Uh, everybody stand up, please. You can, you can, you can. We'll be soon be, soon be rounding up. Uh, I just feel somebody, you, you are in a place where you feel like you are paying uh, for just a bad decision. You are paying for just an error, an error in judgment. You listened to somebody's counsel. You went with somebody. Uh, you married somebody. Just did something. Took a turn at some point in life. And you look back now and you realize that you went against, against what you knew God wanted you to do. What you knew was the right thing to do. And every now and then you feel like you are paying for what you did wrong. You feel some of it is a thought. The devil is just putting you in that place. And some of it you actually can tell that, you know, uh, if not for that turn, if not for, if not for going with that person. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 24 and 25, it said, with an angry man, do not go lest you learn his ways. You know you've taken a wrong turn and you are in just in a difficult place. And every now and then you hear that voice. You know, one mistake that man made, even after the, uh, after the, the judgment was passed, is that there was never a time he asked for mercy. There was never a time he asked for mercy. And that's just what I want us to do. If you are that person, all eyes closed, just lift your hands. I won't call you. I just want to know. Uh, every, every eye closed, okay, can drop it. Any other person, drop it, drop it, drop it. Okay, at the back, drop it, drop it. Okay, so you know what we are going to do? Because there are a number of us, we are all going to hold our hands across the aisle and just begin to plead for mercy. Let's just pray for a stream of mercy a river of mercy to just flow through your hands to the people around you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus for your brothers for your sisters in the name of jesus mercy 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 does not let you get what you deserve god i want you to cry from your heart this prayer will give somebody a 180 degree turn in their lives in the name of jesus this prayer will give somebody a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Somebody tonight, you are going to feel a fresh breath, a fresh wind blowing your way in the name of Jesus. Lord, we cry out on behalf of your brothers, uh, of your sons and your daughters. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says you forgive iniquities, O oh God, uh, for thousands of generations of those who fear you. The Bible says you are gracious, you are compassionate, you are slow to anger, abounding in mercy. Lord, we invoke mercy, mercy in the name of Jesus for every man. 
for every woman for that wrong choice, for that wrong decision, for that wrong turn, for that wrong step, Ragababa, for following that wrong counsel. We cancel the, the consequences right now in the name of Jesus. We uproot, oh God, everything that is not planted by God, every seed of the enemy, we uproot it right now in the name of Jesus. We pray a crop failure, a crop failure over everything that is growing right now that is not of God in the name of Jesus. Lord, give them a fresh starter. Give them a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God turned it around for good. Father, turn it around for good. 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 In the name of Jesus. And we know that in all things, uh, God works together for good. For them that love him and are called according to his purpose. In the name of Jesus, you will not go down. In the name of Jesus, what was meant to destroy you will lift you up. In the name of Jesus, I release into a new season. In the name of Jesus, I break the cycle of pain. I break the cycle of regret. I break the cycle of shame. Of shame. You will not pay that price again. Jesus already paid for it. I did decree your release right now in the name of jesus i come with a warrant from heaven to secure your release from that prison of shame of discouragement of hurt of regret in the name of jesus in the name of jesus god brings you back in line god brings you back on course god brings you back on your journey to destiny in the name of jesus declare over yourself i will end well i will end well i will end well I will end well in the name of Jesus. It will turn for my good. Let me just read this scripture to you. I pray I remember it. I think it's Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. And I think, and I think uh, verse 20, 21 there about Philippians 1. Ah, fantastic. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 19, actually. Hallelujah. Philippians 1, 19. Paul said, for I know. He was in jail. He said, but I know that this will turn out for my deliverance. Hallelujah. Through your prayer Hallelujah. and the supply Hallelujah. of the spirit of Jesus Christ. He said in verse 20, according to my next expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. You shall not be ashamed. You shall not be ashamed. He said, according to your prayers and by the supply of the Spirit, he says, this will turn out for my deliverance. God will turn it for your good and you will testify in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Somebody celebrate the Lord.